Hi, this is Brian Crawford with New Mexico Dream House and our Big Dreams Local Business Edition. This is episode seven, and we're here at a local favorite. This is Treadworks. They are a tire shop. They sell wheels, they do alignments, they even do some lift kits and stuff like that. We're gonna talk to Terry and James, a father and son, about their local business. Looking forward to it, stay with us. here at another local business, Treadworks, and I'm here with Terry and James Burson. How are you guys doing? Doing great. Doing well. Good to have you here. Well, thanks guys. I'm excited to be here. I bought my first set of tires here when I was, I think, 16 years old. Wow. Severe loss of traction on the back axle. Uh, my dad made me buy my own <laughs> tires. Smart man. That's probably never happened to you guys. <laughs> no. Nope. We see a lot of that though. Yeah. We actually do. <laughs> I would imagine. So tell me a little bit about how you got started in the tire business and how Treadworks came to be what it is today. Well, I, I like jokingly say I was tricked into the tire business. You know, I, <laughs> I didn't know anything about it. And through a, a few events, I wound up buying it from a family member. That was close to 33 years ago. Oh, okay, so 33 years now you've been running Treadworks. Well, you're not running Treadworks anymore, anymore now. No. James is running Treadworks. Been passed yes, off. Sir. So how long ago did that transition take place? That happened during COVID. Okay. You know, we were, we were working on it before COVID happened. We were cutting him back, but once COVID was officially here, he had some, some health issues that we were, that we were worried about. Yeah, so I have an autoimmune disorder and uh, with COVID, they scared us to death with that. So all my children says, no, we, we don't want you down there. Yeah, you need to stop interacting with people as much. Right. And, you know, we'd, we had planned, and, and it really worked out. I probably wouldn't have walked out as soon as I did. You start a business, and you're in business for 30 years. It's just hard to, to walk away. This, this kind of gave me that nudge, and the rest is history. James did such a good job while COVID was here, and we just never looked back. Well, and the, the parking lot still seems to be busy. Your turnaround times are good. I got a flat tire on a Friday night recently, and I came in for a set of tires. The service was great. So obviously you're doing a good job. Well, thank you. We're, we're trying. We have really good people. So. Yeah. Thanks. I think that's our secret to our success is not just us, but our, our employees. We have some of the best people. I just couldn't imagine finding anybody better than what we have. I mean, just they're that good. Yeah, the people here are great. That's something that's really distinctive about a small business, a locally owned business, is that sometimes you don't have the, the health insurance and that sort of thing that a big company would have, and sometimes you do, but you know the owner and you know that the owner cares for you and they're going to your wedding and your baby showers and that sort of thing. Yeah, um, you're not just a number. Yeah, yeah, people actually know your name and pat you on the back when you're doing a good job. So what has been the biggest struggle for you as an organization, just you know, taking, taking over the business and then getting it rolling? What are some pretty significant moves that you've had to make over the years? Well, it's been a, a, a venture, I mean, from the beginning. I mean, when I first started this, I would sell the tires, then I'd pull your car in, and then I'd install your tires, you know? <laughs> So we've come a long ways. Yeah. And, and, and then probably one of the greatest days of the, my business is the, when we finally grew enough that I could afford to hire my first tire tech. Yeah. And I didn't have to install them anymore. You know? yeah. so th that was a big day for me. You know? Yeah. Well, you didn't have to install all of them, but I'm sure you were still back there from time to time. Oh, yeah. We're always, even today, I mean, we, you look at the cars, some of these cars that pull in here, they're, they're, they're wheels. If you had to replace them, are five grand for one wheel. You yeah, know? and so you don't just pull a car in, and when a car like that pulls in, you you want to go out there and make sure everything goes the way it's supposed to go. And yeah, what's the most nerve-wracking vehicle that you've had to work on? Um, done a few Bentleys, a couple Ferraris, Lamborghini would probably be the the biggest one. Because those wheels are are not not only expensive, but it's not like you can just go buy Lamborghini wheels. So. Right. They're hard to find, really expensive, and you're putting a rubber band on them. Yeah. Yeah. Tires are about that thing. Yep. One of the big things with small businesses who've been around for a long time is the, you know, the oil filled business that used to be, you know, 35% of our local economy. How did your business shift as some of that went away over the years? So when we started noticing a trend of the oil filled downturn, 
we knew we needed to do something to, to kind of right that ship. And for the longest time, we didn't know exactly what to do. But as we talked and discussed of what are our avenues that we can, that we're kind of not attacking or really focusing on was the retail side. Because we were heavily oil filled side, especially in the beginning. Yeah, yeah. like 60%. 60% of your business was oil filled? Oil filled, yeah. yeah. So you, you drive by our parking lot and it'd just be full of oil filled trucks. So yeah. if it All snowed F-250s. that night, I couldn't even find a parking spot on my own lot. You know, I'd have to park next door yeah. just to get in because we'd have so many oil filled trucks, which we found out was pushing away other business. Yeah. And a lot of these trucks were here because they didn't want to go out in the right. field. Yeah, it was muddy. They didn't want to have to go out and change, so they decided, yeah, yeah. it's time to rotate our tires. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, on a muddy day, you know, of course it would generate mud tire sales and chain sales, but then you'd get a lot of routine maintenance yeah. on a busy day just because guys were trying to avoid going into the field. One of our focuses to combat that was to focus on the retail side, which is why we changed our showroom. Yeah. We changed that back in 2017. If you ever remember what it looked like before, we were a dirty tire warehouse. Yeah. I mean, we had tires everywhere. They were piled on top of one another, but it wasn't the most enjoyable atmosphere. And so trying to open it up, make it more relaxing where people, if they didn't have someone to pick them up, they're not uncomfortable. It, you know, trying they're not to, afraid of staining their clothes. Yeah, right? yeah. It, I mean, we still keep some tires in here, but not like we used to. And just being more presentable, and then showcasing what we can do. Well, I, I remember the the old showroom quite quite well. You had like ten wheels above the back counter. Yep. And when I came in, I was 17 years old when I bought my first set of aftermarket wheels. And I remember, I think it was Marvin would just open boxes and bring them out to me and say, well, what do you think of these? What do you think of these? <laughs> there wasn't a wheel wall like this. Right. But, you know, I still bought them. But this is beautiful now. I mean, you've got great concrete work done and you have this display wall and really wheels everywhere. So you've done a great job with the showroom. Well, thank you. Talking about Marvin, he's still with us. He's been with us almost 30 years now. Is he still? Yeah. It, now he's in he's yeah, your in Kirtland, Kirtland location. He lives out that way, so we, he's transferred out there. But yeah, almost 30 years now. Yeah, great guy. I mean, I, I dealt with him all the time. You know, I worked at, uh, I can say Sears now that they're closed, but I worked at Sears and I ran their auto center. And I remember being the manager of their auto center and buying a set of tires here. At the time, I probably shouldn't have working at Sears. But, <laughs> but um, you know, my dad was always a huge advocate of, of Treadworks and you guys always took good care of it. And I knew how much those big box corporations avoided warranting tires or rotating balance. I knew all the tricks. I went through their training, but I've never had an issue. If I come in to have my tires rotated or balanced, you guys just jump on it. Well, you know, talking about big box, we've actually had customers come in that they sent us to to warranty their tire. And the reason why they do that, a lot of these big boxes work out a deal where there's no warranty on the tire from the manufacturer. And they're so, supposed to eat it in house. So they're given additional discounts to go ahead and just cover it themselves. It hurts their bottom line when they got to do a warranty. But oh, interesting. Uh, so if they can get them to come to another another dealer for Michelin, you might say, or something like that, then it saves them. But you know, that that's just part of the game, I guess, that they have. But, but again, it comes down to that people issue is that you actually care about people because you're you're going to run into these people at the grocery store they never will they're in they're in a tower somewhere in a in a metropolitan area if you deny warranty on something you got to be able to stand behind it right 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 so tell me about covid that's one of the big things that was a struggle for a lot of small businesses oh it man was, that was chaos it was chaos we we had to shut down our farmington store you know they in all Mexico, three, yeah, well, eventually all three, all three got at, shut down at, at different times. But if you had more than two people test positive with COVID, then you had to test everybody. And then you had to close down for sanitation, let everybody get clear of COVID and then come back. Oh. And we had, uh, we did have an outbreak here at the Farmington store where one person tested positive for COVID. You know, everybody feels fine. So we're sending everybody out to be tested. And then next thing you know, we got like, over half of our employees had were COVID, sick. and or they didn't even know. <laughs> didn't even. <laughs> and I was one of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so we closed up. We uh, were real lucky. We had uh, one of our friends that owns uh, Cooper Fire loaned us uh, a machine that a allows. Fogger. Yeah, that so we could clean 
come in and fog everything, all yeah, of our equipment. Yeah, disinfect. And yeah. And one of the things we did, our, our Farmington store is such a, our largest revenue source. So when these people got COVID, we wound up closing the Kirtland store, bringing their whole crew over here. They ran the Farmington store for us. Oh, okay. Yeah, we, we came in, we disinfected, and then we opened it back up with the Kirtland crew. And the nice thing about Kirtland, most of the people that go to Kirtland, a lot of times are coming to Farmington anyway. Yeah. So we were able to take care of our Kirtland customer and our Farmington customer. It all helped, from one yeah, location. Stay, it we only were, well, slow some we of were the losses. closed two days, is all we were, or one day? Well, the Kirtland store was closed, no, closed. for over a week. Yeah. Like 10 but, days. But the Farmington store. But Farmington was only closed for like two days. Oh, good. So you, you mentioned, you know, one tire shop you took over 33 years ago, and that was over kind of by Safeway. What does that timeline look like? So you went from one store to two stores, or did you move here well, first? When I, uh, when I took it over, there was eight years on that lease. So I knew that we needed to finish out that lease, and I tried to buy that building. But at the time, the guy that owned it, it had depreciated all the way down with capital gains tax. Yeah. It was 40%. So if he sold it, 40% went to the government. Yeah. And so because of that, he didn't want to sell it. He just wanted to lease it. Yeah. Keep the income coming in, not give it to the government. Right. So he would not sell it to me, and I wanted to control our destiny. And that D's that here at this location, D's Market, I think, is what their name was. Yeah. Uh, we wound up buying this building from them, adding the shop. And, that was uh, in the mid '90s, wasn't it? Uh, it'd be eight years after the '91, so. So '89 or '98? '99, '98, yeah, somewhere, somewhere there. there. And I bought this almost over a year before we had to move after that. Oh, okay. Because uh, give you time to build out the build, shop, build, get bids, things like that, so we could make a nice transition. Okay. So. We, and we had opened Kirtland before that. Oh, okay. So you had the one store in Farmington, then you opened Kirtland. How soon after? Probably a couple of years before we moved over here, right? Yeah, probably 96. two or three years before we moved there. I was part of an investment group, which were basically my attorney and my CPA and good friend. We just kind of went together and we were putting money together to, to invest and I come up with the idea, why don't we just build a shop out there and I'll lease that. And then eventually I bought them all out. Yeah, okay. You have Farmington, Kirtland, where's your other shop? Uh, we have one in Durango now. Oh, okay. I didn't know you had one in Durango. So how long have you had one in Durango? In 2017, we purchased the JP Tire oh, okay. up in Durango. Gotcha. Is it still branded as Yes, JP? it is. It is. The city fathers there are really kind of hard nosed about small signs versus big signs. And yeah. if you, if we'd have changed the name or changed anything on that building, we'd had to pull all the signs down, even on the walls of the building. Yeah. And We'd lose 90% of the signage yeah. to change the name. I, I don't know if you yeah. drove down North Durango and you see all these brand new buildings, but you can't even hardly tell right. what these businesses are because yeah. they got a little old building out on the sidewalk or a sign out on the sidewalk. Yeah. So we just said, okay, we'll just keep it. We want people to know there's a tire store here. Yeah. And and the, the truth is the plan was we felt they, the city would allow us to put a proposal together. Yeah. To change to change the name and maybe give a grant some a uh, variance, right? A variance of the signage. But they kind of told me in the beginning that it probably wouldn't happen. And so we kind of felt we discussed that if if we bought the company and went right away, like, hey, we want to change the name. Yeah. We had no leverage. Yeah. But we kind of felt like, you know what? If we operate it for a couple of years, with the assumption that we're fine with keeping it but we would like to change it, yeah. maybe they would be more willing to, to grant some, some leeways there. And if you've seen that sign, it, it could use some updates, but we can't even update the sign. They wouldn't right. even let us paint the pole. <laughs> yeah, they wouldn't let you. <laughs> Not even paint the, the pole. The pole sign in yeah. is actually outlawed on Main Street. So if you do anything to it, it's got to come down. Yeah, it, it goes away. Because it's grandfathered in, but you, they, they want to discourage you from keeping it. Yeah. So they want you to eventually to take it down. And that was in 2017. So we were operating under JP and fast forward a couple of years, then COVID hits. Yeah. And then that has been a whirlwind since. So we hadn't even really thought about 
even trying to go back to the city and talking to them because all those hurdles we came through. You have a big brand in, in San Juan County. I think a lot of people, Treadworks is a household name. I mean, I know a lot of people who bought tires here. Do you have people that come down from Durango thinking that I want to deal with Treadworks, not knowing that we they do. just drove past your store? Well, well every, no. Everybody but... that has bought up there gets an invoice that actually has Treadworks on it. Oh, okay. It. And it, you know, it, it does say JP Tire, but it's still also says Treadworks on there. So they kind of start putting it together. And I think a lot of the community knows that yeah. Treadworks is running it, yeah. Yeah, when you mentioned the third store, I knew I knew about Kirtland and Farmington, and I just found out about the third store when you were talking about it. So when did you take over, you said 2017? Of JP Tire? Yeah. Yeah, okay. January of 2017. Okay. What's the next big thing for Treadworks? Boy, that's a good question. <laughs> I think probably we're still struggling with COVID. We are struggling with finding top-notch people to grow with. Yeah. We have a great group of people that work for us, but if we were to open another store in uh, Durango, we're shorthanded there. We can't find the techs to expand our shop up there. The Durango market is so expensive to live Right. that people can't afford to live there. The normal eight to five guy that works there can't afford to live there. Yeah, right. And uh, it, that's a big struggle for us. So they're driving from Bayfield or Ignacio. Or, or Aztec or Farmington. Yeah, right. Your, your business, you probably understand that quite well. Yeah, it's it's interesting because Durango, their average price point, last I looked, is is three and a half times what our average price point in Farmington is. You know, when I first started in real estate in 2016, houses in Aztec always trailed, you know, about 5% behind Farmington in terms of pricing. Well, now Aztec is the same price as Farmington, even some of the nicer neighborhoods in Farmington because a lot of people are commuting back and forth yeah yeah they have to commute well we're, we're commuting people from farmton to durango to work yeah because we can't find the staff up there to fill the, the spot so that that is a big issue for us and we're, we don't know what the answer to that is yet we haven't solved it yet a lot of small businesses are struggling with that right you're competing in a limited labor force it's always going to be a struggle i think well it, it just magnified it by about a hundred fold after COVID. and then you know the oil field too a lot of the big players in oil field when they left the area the big producers the conical phillips that's a struggle you know you can open all kinds of businesses if you want but if you don't have good people to run them if you don't have the right people to take care of your customers if you don't have good mechanics to make sure that you know those brakes are on their right and the alignments are done the way they're supposed to be then you're just shooting yourself in the foot and you're not going to be around you know? yeah because the money comes in the front door but it goes out the back door and warranty work and warranty claims and that sort of thing if you don't have well they don't come back and loss of reputation know? and things yeah. like that yeah because even if you make it right I, I go back to my days at uh, at sears and one of my friend's moms said oh i know you work there but i would never buy another tire at sears and i said well why is that she said well in 1992, I drove out of the driveway of Sears and my car fell over because two of the wheels fell off. <laughs> One person's tire falls off and they're, they're probably not coming back. Right. Well, and you wouldn't blame them, would you? No, no, For not sure. much. So when it comes to Treadworks, what makes you different than other independent tire shops? Well, I think uh, the main thing is our relationship with our suppliers. We are a direct dealer to Michelin, BF Goodridge, Union Royal, also Toyo, Hankook and some others and when you're direct that gives you a price advantage and uh, some of those advantages means you're going to save money if we can buy our products cheaper than our competitors do and allows us to compete with the big boxes you don't have to settle for two hour waiting three hour waiting when you can buy the the same products here and and get a wonderful price at the same time and then you gotta you have to look at our employees i mean we have employees that have been with us for a long time they really know what they're doing you know yeah. uh like we talked about marvin earlier yeah. he's been with us almost 30 years yeah. we've got several people in the 20 plus years with us lots of them in the 15 year range my shop foreman went to work for me originally over 30 years ago oh wow yeah he did leave us for a while. He got transferred, or his, his wife got transferred to Phoenix, so he left. Quite a few years ago, he come back, and he's been with us ever since. But That's kind of a funny story, though. Like, he came back just to visit, say hi, and walked out with a job. <laughs> <laughs> and he's an awesome mechanic, you know. Yeah, he's, he's a true master technician. 
that's what you want if you got a problem. You want a master tech around to take care of it. So when I hear Treadworks, I think tires. But in your showroom, I obviously see wheels. That goes with tires. Correct. But I see batteries. Correct. And we saw an alignment machine. What what services do you all provide? Our focus is tires. That's the main part of our business. But obviously the wheels and the batteries. But we do alignments, brakes, shocks, all your chassis and, and that kind of stuff. We, we have, have really good equipment too. Our alignment machines are the best there is out there. And we spend a lot of money on things like no touch wheel machines. You know, you bring your $100,000 car in and you want tires mounted on it, you sure don't want scratches on those wheels. So we, we actually have a machine that will mount the tire and- Without your, touching the wheel. No kidding. Yeah, your human hands won't touch it. The machine mounts the tire. There's no clamps or anything like that that touch it. Really? Well, you mentioned a hundred thousand dollar car, but it doesn't take much to get to yeah. hundred thousand dollars <laughs> anymore. There's a lot more hundred thousand dollar cars yeah. coming in the door than there used to be. That's for sure. Yeah. You know, you get this number in your head. It can't go past that. You know, people will quit buying, but it well, didn't it's happen. it's like the old uh, Burlington you're talking about. and Phillips sixty six. <laughs> they called them up one day when tire mud tires got over a hundred dollars, and they were chewing them out. Yeah, they said we don't pay, pay over a hundred dollars for a tire. <laughs> And now, I mean, if it's four or five hundred on some of these sizes, that's you know, just when you got a ten ply, twenty two inch tire mud tire for an oil filled truck, you know. Yeah, <laughs> and those are expensive tires. Well, you were telling me about your rock crawler. Yeah, blows my mind. Twelve hundred dollars a tire. So when those tires seem high, I just think, well, at least it ain't twelve hundred bucks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. And they don't last very long, unfortunately. Yeah, because we're looking at that house on sunrise. I was like, oh yeah, you could probably drive it down to the canyon. You no, know, I'll still trailer and it's not touching pavement. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to wear those tires any faster than you have to. I mean, we're already going through like two sets a year. I mean, anything you can do to preserve them. So community involvement is a huge part of every small business. What are the, what are some of the things that you get involved in? Man, over the years, I've been on quite a few different boards. I was on the the Aztec Boys and Girls Club board many years ago. Uh, been on a couple other nonprofit boards. Several churches I've been very active in and on their elder boards and stuff like that. We really love the church we go to now. That's a that's a big thing for us. Is our faith. And you mentioned that you are involved in the fall crawl. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So fall crawl is an event that. And it's the first week of September that leads up to the We Rock competition that happens. It's three days of uh, guided trails uh, rides in the canyon. You can sign up to participate in it based on what kind of rig you're wanting to bring or what rig you might have. It's more designed around trying to show people that don't live in Farmington, people come from all over the country, yeah. and to experience what we have in the canyon. These trails aren't always well marked, so you no, kind of have to have some they're, local. They're all right on top of each other, and this, yeah. but if you don't know where they're at, a lot of times you'll drive right by it or over the top of it, and you don't know where it's at. So you mentioned faith and you've been involved at a local church. I think that's one of the cool things about a small business is that you can bring your family to work. Sure. Um, you didn't have to wait until you were 16 to step in the door to do chores around the shop, I'm guessing. <laughs> How old were you when you started busting tires? About 15. Yeah. yeah. About 15 years old. But I'm sure that you came to work with dad as a little kid. And oh, yeah. We didn't have babysitters or uh, child care. It was... It, you're those, you're that was with my child's care. <laughs> yeah, it was get out of that stack of tires before you knock it over. Or? Yeah, it was a lot of climbing and playing in tires as a little kid. You know, James always loved the tire business. I mean, he really did. In fact, it was a, a big discussion we had about college. He wanted to stay here. And I said, no, no, I'm going to sell the business and you need to get an education, right? Yeah. And so it's really cool as a father to be able to hand the baton over to him and 30 years of my life of building something is still in the family yeah still in the family and being run well yeah he's grown the business since i left what do you attribute that to what do you attribute that growth to you know uh, just a little bit of everything i think our decision to start going after retail was a big decision to when we saw the oil field we wanted to focus more on retail and retail customers and as the oil field pulled out we started seeing our retail numbers just automatically just start going up i think over the years we've accumulated better and better employees and again like you were talking about some small businesses can't afford health insurance we were able to start offering health insurance and retirement plans so we could attract 
attract even better and better people all the time and keeping them. And, and I think the testament to our business is if you go and talk to a lot of our employees here, I don't know what our average is per employee, but I bet it's over 10 yeah. years. And, yeah. and we have, what, close to 40? Over half of our employees have been, been here uh, over 10 years. That's wild. And and we have over 40 employees. We have 39 right now. 39. Yeah. We've been as high as 43. How does your faith play a role in your business? Everything. Everything. Yeah. We. <laughs> I don't know if I do that, but you know, God is everything to me, and uh, He has blessed me so much, and you know, I just every. It, May have to take a second here, but I don't know. That's you know, fine. but uh, we have a, a an idea or a motto that we live by. We always want to do the right thing, no matter what. I don't. I won't ever see you walking down the street and have to turn my head because I didn't do something right, yeah. or I didn't take care of a problem, or didn't do my best to try to solve your problem. You know, we have learned though, just because you want to do the right thing. That's not always easy. Yeah. Sometimes it's hard to figure out what the right thing is. Sometimes there's a lot of gray. Yeah. You know, and trying to figure out what actually happened and what you, is the right thing. So. Yeah, when you talk about automobiles, I mean, we've had cars pull in for a flat repair and their transmission go out, you know, and, <laughs> and they're going, you broke my transmission, you know, well, no, we didn't. So we got to figure out the right thing, right? Right. We always give the glory to God. He has blessed us and he's been blessing us. I've been a Christian for 44 years. Something I, I hate about corporate America, they expect you to separate yourself from your faith. And as people of faith, you know that you can't actually separate your faith from yourself because we're holistic beings. And we, we bring that into our work. We bring it into the way we minister to our employees, or the organizations that we donate to. You can't, you can't separate the two, it's, it's impossible. Yeah, and you know, as we have grown through the years, I mean, we started me installing the tires to where we are today. Some years back, maybe about 15, maybe close to 20, we were just being blessed and God started speaking to me about helping those that need help from no fault of their own. And we started looking for ways to help others that were in need not because they made bad decisions, it wasn't even their fault, just something in their life that turned around and needed help. And, and we've been able to find ways to do that, and that's important to us too. Well, and that's probably a lot of the reason why you've had some employees over 30 years, and a lot of them over 10 years, because you treat them like people. You know, I may be, or he may be their boss. <laughs> <laughs> But that doesn't mean we can't be friends, and and you know there is a there's a distinction for sure between. But you know we love them. There's people that work for us that we absolutely love. We wouldn't do basically about anything for them if we can. Yeah. Yeah. It, if it's within your means, right? Right. Yeah, and then does. they tend to stick around and be more loyal and, and things like that. Orlando, remember the guy I told you that first time I hired him was 30 years ago. Well, while he was working for me, all of a sudden he started having health issues. Turns out he had a tumor the size of a football that collapsed one of his lungs. Oh, and man. He couldn't work. Well, he could do light duty, he just couldn't mechanic. We put him in the sales room and told him, you know, just do the best you can, and we paid him anyway. You know? Yeah. And took care of him, and 30 years later, he's still working here. And you didn't do it necessarily for retention. You just do it because it's the right thing, <laughs> right. and we people had the, stick around. We had the ability. He's a wonderful guy, kind of guy you want to invest in, and, you know, and we just want to do, right, do him right. What's your favorite part of running a tire store? <laughs> For me, it's meeting the people that come in the door. Yeah. I'm a people person. I love people. And I love talking to people. So when people come in the door, just being able to talk to them, find out what I can do to help them. And I've always believed, too, that sales is about helping people. If you're a salesman who thinks I'm going to trick people or cheat people or slide something over on somebody, then I don't want to know you. Yeah, it's a zero-sum game. Yeah. Because it will come back to you. Yeah, that's right. If you can teach your salespeople, your tech, your service writers, we're just here to help people solve. They, got, they come in that door, they got a problem. 
tire problems, automotive <laughs> problems, something. They got a problem. Most yeah. people don't just go out on Saturday. You know what, honey? Let's go look at some tires. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go buy some tires. I, I've seen some of those guys. <laughs> I mean, there's <laughs> well, there, <laughs> there are, there there are guys. guys. There's always an exception. Yeah. Of yeah. yeah. Well, last time I did business with you guys, I didn't want to do business with you guys. I just had to because I had a flat tire. Well, that's the kid. You came in here with a problem, right? That's right. That's and right. And that's what we're here for is to solve those problems. And that's what we teach our people. I think for me, like the best part of it being in the tire business for me is the people. Yeah. Seeing guys progress and grow, maybe start in the tire bay and work their way up to a manager position. Or We had uh, a guy that's been with us a very long time, had an alcohol problem. We got behind him, helped fund to rehab for him. I threw him in my truck and told him he had to go to rehab. And if he completed the program, he could come back and have a job. He's been with us 10 years after that. That's awesome. Yeah. And sober. That's great. It's just the people for me. I love our customers. Our, we, we have a tremendous customer base. Native American customer base is just unbelievable for us. I've got customers I've been doing business with for 30 years. Yeah. They look at me as their friend. Even though I'm not here, they still come in and ask for it. They a find little Terry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how was that? Uh, you know, obviously you being such an integrated part of Treadworks for such a long time, how was that for you stepping into that leadership role and then even with some of the customers? That's a good question. It was hard at first. It was hard. Yeah. You know, and the government's shutting businesses in and everybody's scared. Well, what are we going to do? Yeah, do we well, need to go look for jobs? Are we going to get shut down? And the unknowns, no one knew. That transition was, was really difficult. Yeah, we yes. walked in the door every day with positive uh, attitudes. You know, no, we're going to be fine. With the initial first, okay, we're... We're gonna close Farmington for two weeks. You know, we're gonna what was the we're flatten the curve? We're gonna flatten the curve, and then that turned into two more weeks, and then two more weeks, and two more weeks. You know, business was down pretty significantly at first for yeah. those first yeah. three or four months until about everybody was just over it. Right, and didn't care anymore. You know, we got a lot of employees that are commission based. When they see the store do this, yeah, they're all well. How am I gonna feed my family? How am I gonna pay my mortgage? We didn't want to lose anybody, and we didn't want them to worry about it. Going into it, we just sat everybody down and we're like, you know what? We're going to pay you off of last year's number, regardless no of whether we hit it. Yeah, and, and that was before we knew that the PPP loans were coming out, so that's a big leap of faith for you guys. Correct. Yeah, it was. I mean, you work hard to get good employees for a lot of years, and you want to just lose them yeah. just like that, you know? Well, we, that we was the, that's been the just, secret to our success is our employees. and. It seems like over the years, we've slowly built and acquired them, right? You can't just go flip a light switch and be like, boom, there's 10 awesome employees yeah, just right there. Yeah, I'll take 10 there. of your best employees. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They're hard to find, yeah. and they're hard to keep sometimes. It's hard it to is. find people with work ethic. There's a lot of really intelligent people out there. Or talented people. They are talented, but that work ethic is hard to find. And Let's then also it. meet our values, too. Yeah. If you were to articulate your values, what would you say they are? It would go back to do the right thing. Yeah. Whoever walks through that door, everybody that works here has that thought. Do the right thing. I mean, if you do the right thing and it bites you in the butt, okay. Yeah. I'm good with that. This is probably last year, I think I called you on uh, Megan's expedition. and I was looking at my Ford app and I was like, oh, it looks like I need struts. I don't think I need struts, but I'll call James and see what he thinks. I called you and you said, well, do you think it needs struts? And I said, well, <laughs> I haven't noticed any degrading quality of the ride. And he said, well, sometimes that's just a money grab. Just keep driving it until you need struts. <laughs> and I think that's a good testament to my experience here has always been that you guys are honest, upfront. Um, I get a good price, great service. I like you guys, but I want to hang out here all day. And I, I've never had to. I mean, I'm in and out in less than an hour usually. Right. Well, that's kind of been part of our motto is we've always wanted to offer best-in-class products with best-in-class service, We're trying to pair that together. James, Terry, thanks for having me out. Thanks for uh, letting us crash your showroom here. Guys, if you are in Farmington or, or Durango, come to Treadworks if you need new tires or go to JP Tire in Durango. These guys will treat you well and they're going to treat you with honesty, integrity. They're going to get you in and out pretty quick. Come see these guys. You see what they're all about. Do business with them. Thank, Thank you. you. You're awesome, man. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Appreciate you guys.